Hello and welcome back to Storytime with Mary's Child Development Series with Hearts and Minds Aloud's Baba Darzi. Hello Baba, how are you? I'm very well Mary, how are you? I'm doing really, really well, thank you. And, you know, as the lockdown is now slowly lifting, mm. children are going back to school. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that and how you think children are going to cope after being at home for so many months. Thank you, thank you, Mary. Since Eason is also a, a different stage of this entire experience with the pandemic, and they might require a little bit of adjustment from parents and then from children as well. We know that emotionally and mentally, um, children have experienced the, you know, similar fears and anxieties as adults have, as their parents have uh, once they've understood the nature of the disease and also recognizing and observing all the changes that have, gone, have, that have gone on, right? With the lockdown and also with the change of routine, we know that children have also lost a sense of structure and a sense of simulation, which they usually have um, on ordinary days when they're going to school and, you know, hanging out with their friends and learning um, as they did before the lockdown. But in certain homes, children may have also been um, exposed to interpersonal conflicts, right? Uh, in homes where there have been lots of um, maybe arguments and, you know, maybe even violence from parents. And some children may have gone through this sort of, um, they may have experienced some of the violence as well. So emotionally and mentally, they've, you know, this entire pandemic and the experience has, had, has taken its toll on children as well. Um, somehow I'm sure they've managed to build resilience while they've been home, okay? And when, we, when we're talking about the emotional effect, we also know that we need to consider the, the possible post-traumatic effects of uh, COVID-19 and the entire experience on children. Um, but with the restrictions easing and with children going back, we would want to do what's, what's in the best interest of the child, okay? Uh, depending on how well adjusted, how ready the child is to, um, you know, face, face the world for want of a better expression, you know, because we've been, they've been taught to shield and to, you know, stay at home, which has become the safe space away from corona and all of its ills. So uh, we, we want to measure the child's readiness and then following that, we know what to do uh, in their best interest. Perfect. Th thank you, Barbara. Um, so obviously now with um, children returning to school, they're going to be um, social distancing protocols at schools that young children have to observe. And you know, with very young children, I can imagine that must be quite hard for them to um, socially distanced from their friends that they're so used to playing with. So how can parents help to ease children into this and help them to play with their friends with these new rules in mind? Mm -hmm. So if we're being honest, there's no easy answer to, to, to this question. Yeah. Because at some point you, you would feel like, you know, you are, what, whatever you're doing is a bit of a trial and error. You want to see what works best for the child. But yes. I believe that open communication is invaluable in all of this. Um, the child would always have questions and you want to be available and ready and you know, able to address those questions so that it alleviates most of, if not all of their fears. Okay, you want to also be honest with the information that you are giving to them. Okay, so you explain what is happening, but you, you highlight the positive as well. Um, and talking about the positive um, might be you highlighting or focusing on recovery rates, for example. And you want to be consistent with the information that you are giving them, okay? So that you are not creating more confusion yeah. and giving them that information. So these are a few things that parents can do to help children ease their way back into the new routine. Perfect. Um, so my own children, uh, they are two and four. Um, mm. They're actually going back to school. We made the decision to send them back to school just a couple of days a week. They go to a preschool, so it's quite small. Okay. And one of the things that they're going to have to deal with is being in a bubble. A bubble means they're only allowed to play with two or three friends mm -hmm. at all. <laughs> and so they're going to be in groups with them and their teacher and, and the small group of friends. In your opinion, how do we help children to understand these, this new normal, this new situation that they've been thrust into? 
Okay, well, I, I, I look forward to seeing how that works with the bubble and, you know, how that arrangement works. Um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, whatever decision that we take should be in the best interest of the child, right? And also, I guess it's a function of what the school is able to provide. Now, I, I believe that this is clearly a way of making sure that there is less physical interaction between children uh, who will have a harder time, you know, restricting contact with their other friends, no matter how, you know, dire or how important it is to stay away. So like I've already mentioned, explaining and communicating is important. Maybe it could be helpful to act out or simulate some of the reasons why um, social distancing and hand washing and all of these things are important because of course we all know that hand washing for example is part of hygiene and post corona it will still be important yeah. so you yeah. also want to you want to speak to children about this and explain it to them and also demonstrate if you have the opportunity you know why these things are important and over time i believe that the message will will be carried across to them i completely agree with that um Personally, I called the school um, ahead of the children going back to make sure that, firstly, um, Chloe was in the same group as her best friend because also these relationships formed at a young age are really important. Absolutely. But also just to understand what the protocols are and to make sure that I was comfortable with it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think, to your point, parents need to obviously take control. Okay. Yeah. So, Baba, you know, I know that not everybody is ready to send their children back to school. Mm -hmm. My children's preschool has been open for a whole month and mm -hmm. I, I decided to wait to make sure that everything was okay and that we were sick and I was comfortable with the, the way that they were handling um, the protocols um, before I decided that it was okay for me to send my children back to school but um how do we tell if children are actually ready to go back as well because they've been at home for so long and they're probably scared of course of course of course it's expected yeah. that they would be scared um so a big part of knowing would be from the observation that you've done uh, yeah. of your child and you know how their temperaments and their behaviors have been maintained or evolved during the lockdown period so for some children the isolation might have resulted in, resulted in them becoming restless and you know irritable um, maybe exhibiting a bit of anger and um, being demanding and all of those things so you want to measure right how much of that you are seeing if the if the isolation is what is creating that you might want to encourage that they start benefiting from social interaction. And I believe that while the school is open, because everybody understands what the situation is, um, teachers would want to be, or schools would want to be flexible as well. So some schools might want to stagger open and closing times. And I believe that they would also understand that once you've brought your child to school, for example, uh, they are not doing so well on the first day, you want to be able to you know, take them out much earlier than other people who are adjusting fairly well so that you slowly ease them into that uh, schedule instead of throwing them uh, sort of throwing them in a deep end okay so there's a lot of observation and then testing as well from both the school and 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 the parent and um, i believe that eventually we will find the balance perfect baba thank you so much you know it's it, and you know to all the parents and carers out there is a really tough time and I wish you the best with whatever decision you make in sending your kids back to school because it's been a really difficult choice and it's a personal decision as well. Um, thank you so much, Baba. Is there anything you want to add um, to this before, before we end? Uh, well, it's just to keep encouraging parents because I know that it's a stressful time and you would be worried about making the perfect decision for your child you are doing the best that you can and so keep going and you will eventually find your footing brilliant thank you so much it's been lovely having you on story time with mary again great and again. i'm really enjoying our conversation so we will talk again next time see you next week bye bye